When it comes to backward compatibility, the Xbox One, One X, and recently Series S and X offer excellent backward compatibility with older games. It's one area where Microsoft hasn't cut any corners on, supporting over 400 Xbox 360 titles. Certainly not the full library, but a significant bite indeed. The Xbox One X and more recently the Series S and X will also offer game specific enhancements including increased resolutions and in some instances increased frame rates. Unfortunately however, this is only available on the Xbox line of consoles. If you're a PC gamer and want to take advantage of Xbox 360 titles, your only option is to utilize xCloud streaming, which opens up a curated list of back compat titles which for all intents and purposes is a fine option. But game streaming has its own challenges that we aren't going to get into in this video. If you want to play native Xbox 360 games on your PC, then your only option right now is to use homebrew emulation, specifically the emulator known as Xenia. We covered Xenia on the channel back in 2018. It started out as a side project by developer Ben Vanek in 2011, who was frustrated that he could not play region lock games on his Xbox and set out to build an emulator. Since then, Xenia has undergone many twists and turns and in 2018 came into its own when games such as Halo 3, Reach and ODST were showing great progress. When we last covered it on the channel, the emulator was in a pretty good state. But it's fair to say that it was still mostly in the proof of concept and development phase with only a small amount of games were fully playable. It's also worth mentioning that many users utilize Xenia in order to play the GoldenEye 007 XBLA remake that was recently released by an unknown group. Over the last three years, Xenia has had a lot of updates and enhancements applied to it. And in recent times, there's been some really great progress. It turns out there's been a lot going on. Over the past three years, in fact, the GPU emulation in particular has been of a lot of interest. The Xbox 360 graphical processor known as Xenos on paper shouldn't be very difficult to emulate. After all, the Xbox 360 uses DirectX 9 and any graphics card on the market should be able to handle this without any issues. But as it turns out, emulating the Xenos is quite complex and the team has experimented with many different approaches. Lead rendering programmer on the Xenia project known as Triangle mentions that the Xenos contained DirectX 9, but was developed just before the beginning of DirectX 10 and contains many features that were not standardized and in the worst case, not available on the PC. When they were finally implemented, in some cases, there were significant differences. Therefore, a simple one-to-one -one mapping of Xbox 360 to PC Direct 3D calls would not work. In fact, these differences were so vast, the approach was to completely rewrite parts of the Xbox 360 GPU, specifically around color, depth and stencil buffers. The other complex part of emulating the Xbox 360 GPU is the ED RAM. This is a small block of physical RAM that is a separate chip that sits right next to the Xbox 360 GPU that effectively acts as exclusive superfast memory so that the GPU doesn't need to compete with the CPU on the main bus for bandwidth. ED RAM is fast and utilizing it correctly can offer significant performance increases. The chip is directly connected to the Xenos chip and utilizes a 32 gigabyte per second interface. But its biggest drawback is there's only 10 megabytes of space available. This means that developers got creative with how to utilize ED RAM correctly, and many games will utilize ED RAM in many different ways. There is really no standardized way to utilize ED RAM at all. It's all up to the developer and how they can get the best optimization for their game that they're working on. The complexity of ED RAM in emulation means that there must be a lot of data that gets copied either to or from ED RAM, which depending on the game title and the utilization of ED RAM can have serious performance implications. But the good news, however, is that there's been a major optimization for copying ED RAM contents to host render targets. And if we take a look at the Xenia blog post, there's been a massive optimization of copying EDRAM contents between host render targets 
only copying data when needed and in a much more straightforward way with significantly less bandwidth usage. Other improvements include true MSAA implementation. Again, on paper, it doesn't sound like this should be a big deal. On the Xbox 360, MSAA costs nothing in terms of frame buffer memory bandwidth. Previously, Xenia would emulate MSAA as SSAA, which took a significant performance hit. This code would only allow for resolution scaling at 2x, in other words 1440p if the game ran at a native 720p. On the latest Xenia updates, the host render target cache has been completely overhauled and games now run much faster on average, two times as fast in most instances. There's also the option to apply 3x3 resolution scaling that is 3860 by 2160 resolutions or 4K. But be advised, I've tried 3X resolution upscaling on my PC and it does have a performance hit. But developer Triangle already has plans to optimize this code. So we should see new performance improvements with new builds. Work was also done to address differences in gamma blending due to the difference in how a PC GPU and the Xbox 360 handle gamma values as it turns out, this is not a simple conversion of values. In fact, in some cases, incorrect blending causes rendering issues that were considered unfixable. The rewrite of the render target implementation addresses these issues, and in some cases, patches were applied to work around them. Halo 3, for example, requires sRGB values for render targets, but for regular textures, requires linear gamma values, but other games handle blending in different ways. Therefore, specific blending settings has been applied to the configuration, which can be adjusted as needed. But the results speak for themselves, with correct blending occurring in Halo 3. This was one of the biggest issues that plagued the game in the 2018 build that I had previously taken a look at. So what does this all mean to the end user? Well, right off the bat, emulation compatibility has significantly increased. According to Triangle's blog post, out of the 1404 total Xbox 360 titles, 74% or over 1,000 are considered playable and get in-game, with 221 marked as playable near flawlessly. This is a major improvement from 2018. Not only has the GPU emulation been rewritten, improvements have been made to the OS, CPU and audio processing. My tests showed improvements in many areas. The last time I tried Halo 3 on Xenia, it contained texture issues. Notice the no muzzle flash from the weapon fire. In the latest build I tried, the muzzle flash is present and many textures have been improved. I also threw a selection of random games at the emulator to see how it would perform. In all cases, unless specified, I'm running at 2x resolution scaling or 1440p. As mentioned earlier, three times is just too demanding for my system at this time. Red Dead Redemption is another game that I tried in 2018 that had serious performance issues and frame rate drops. In the current build, as you can see, it's much improved thanks to the render target cache optimizations. Emulation is likely the only way we'll ever get to play Red Dead on PC, and the improvements that Xenia has brought to the table are most welcome. Another game I tried was Forza Horizon 2, and this one ran great. Not perfect, however. There are noticeable texture issues surrounding the blending of the car shadow with the road surface, but these are minor. Other games I tried were interesting. Dead or Alive 5 struggled somewhat in the menu and introduction sequence, but in game, running at 2x upscale resolution, it ran smooth as butter at 60 FPS with no noticeable texture issues at all. Fear by Monolith was a game that simply didn't run in 2018, and again, thanks to the GPU and OS improvements, gets in game and is playable with some noticeable texture issues on occasion. Certainly, the emulation isn't perfect, but it's significantly improved over the last time we took a look at Xenia, 
and other games I tried included Condemned Criminal Origins, which did not boot on the 2018 version I tried, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, as well as Gears of War 2, which did have some noticeable texture issues, especially around character models. There was one game that I tried that simply crashed, and that was Titanfall, but this was the exception rather than the rule. In summary, Xenia has undergone some massive updates, which has really pushed the emulation beyond the limits originally. Many believed that it wasn't possible to advance the emulation in any meaningful way, but some hard decisions to rewrite parts of the OS and GPU subsystems really were the right approach. It's not perfect, but it's getting better. And as always, we will continue to keep an eye on Xenia's advancements and share any interesting updates here on the channel when they arrive. It's wonderful to see such advancements in the 360 emulation in the last two and a half years since we last revisited this particular emulator. And I'm very happy to see that the emulator is really taking a lot of strides right now and getting much, much better over time. And I'm really excited about the future. And you guys should be as well, because I think this is definitely one to keep an eye on going forward. And as I mentioned when I covered RCPS3, Show your support with Xenia and get on their Patreon and throw them a couple of dollars every month because they could really use your help. Now, it's easier to say that Microsoft isn't Sony and has a better handle on backward compatibility. Yes, that is absolutely true. But on the PC side of the house, there really isn't much they've done. And the only recourse, the only way you can play 360 games on your PC is utilizing emulation specifically the Xenia emulator. Until we see Microsoft come to the table with a 360 solution on PC where you can play backward compatible 360 games that doesn't involve cloud streaming, then this is the only option that you have. So get behind Xenia. It's a fantastic emulator and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on its progress on the channel over the next year, two years, however long it takes. I'm definitely going to be continuing to cover this emulator for you guys on the channel. Well, that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.